2021 marks the 130th anniversary of Ralph Connor Memorial United Church, or more correctly, the 130th anniversary of the first service of worship held in this building, which at the time was known as Canmore Presbyterian Church. Its minister in 1891 was the Reverend Charles Gordon, better known to much of the world as the prolific author Ralph Connor. Five years ago, January 25th, 2016, we held a service of celebration and gratitude here and tried our best to roll back the clock to 1891. All of the hymns selected were from the Canadian Presbyterian hymnal of the 1890s, and portions of the service came from the writings of Reverend Charles Gordon and Miss Minnie Fulton, who was an early school teacher in this town and an active participant in the life of the Presbyterian Church. That service will be re-presented this morning in its entirety as video recorded and edited by my son, Jordan. Much has happened in these last five years. We are now an affirming ministry and have been blessed by growing friendships and partnerships with Stony Nakoda friends as we walk the shared path of reconciliation. Through an outreach ministry that was just barely starting uh, five years ago uh, and has had huge community participation, the Bow Valley Refugee Project, we have successfully transacted two refugee resettlements and a second outreach ministry the Canmore Young Adult Network, Cyan, has been formed to bring connection and a shared voice to young adults in the Bow Valley. And just before COVID changed everything last year, we started a green initiative that promises many interesting projects in the years to come. Thank you to everyone involved in these initiatives and so many other areas of church activity. As you will see as you catch snippets of the 2016 congregation, there have been some comings and goings, but in another way, some things have not changed all that much for this congregation since 1891. Then as now, this community of faith has understood the responsibility of being a church on Main Street, paying attention to the needs not just of the congregation, but of the community. Even as we worship online rather than in person, that concern for the health and well-being of neighbor is a guiding principle. And just to note, next Sunday, January 31st, 2021, we will be having an online worship service on YouTube, followed by Ralph Connor's 2020 annual meeting, which will be held on Zoom. So, Without further rambling, welcome to worship on this 130th anniversary of Canmore Presbyterian slash Canmore United slash Ralph Connor Memorial United Church. Enjoy singing the old time hymns and entering into the spirit of honoring the past while looking to God's horizon for our future. Amen. You can tell we don't process in very often. <laughs> Welcome all to our service of worship on this anniversary Sunday. On January 25th, 1891, the first worship service was held in this church building, pretty much in this very location. And now, 125 years later, we join in praise to God, whose love is timeless. We gather with appreciation for the stewardship of our First Nations sisters and brothers who have cared for this land much longer than the 125 years that we have been here. And I offer my gratitude on this day in particular to our dear historian, the late Mary Smith, whose wonderful church history has taught me so much about the story of this special place. 
My name is Reverend Greg Woolley, and it's my pleasure to have Reverend Sue Hertel with us this morning. Sue was here in 2003-2004 serving this congregation, and uh, great to have you in worship leadership with us today. From my experience of this congregation, music is central to our life, so it will also be central to our anniversary service. As much as possible, the hymns and prayers in today's service come from resources that would have been used by this congregation in 1891. We have decided to keep the language of the day rather than updating the words. So if there are places where the theology or words are a little jarring, well, <laughs> we give thanks for some of our newer understandings. But we also on this day honor the faith and faithfulness of those who worshiped within these four walls in 1891 and the years following. After worship today, we will have anniversary cake and coffee served in Gordon Hall and an opportunity to share some remembrances. In preparation for that, I invite you right now to think about how long you have been involved with this congregation and some of the key lay people who have shared that journey with you. Each time I enter this sanctuary, it strikes me that these walls virtually vibrate with the spiritual energy of those who have worshipped here over these 125 years. We are in the very same place where people of God have gathered, and we are humbled by that and grateful for it. Thousands of worshippers have gathered here. But as we review the history of this church, there are family names that do keep coming up in the leadership of the congregation. Many of these names are from well before our time, but I'm going to recite some of those family names now in thankful remembrance. And I hope they will remind you of some of these families and some of the other longtime stalwarts whose journey has intersected with yours. And so we remember the contributions of these and other families. Young, Wright, Wilson, Wignall, West, Summerhays, Southwood, Smith, Sherwood, Rhoda, Riva, Ritchie, Ramsey, Price, O'Hearn, Musgrove, McLeod, McLaren, Lister, Luella, Lewis, Latvala, Kernick, Jones, Jordan, Jackson, Hubman, Greeno, Fraser, Fowers, Fisher, Erickson, Elliot, Dredge, Dewis, Tchaikovsky, Brown, Broderick, Briggs, Bracco, Bloxham, Baxter, Atkinson. For the ongoing worship life of this congregation, for those who serve on committees and boards and have taught Sunday school, <coughs> For all the saints who have served Christ's mission in this place, we give our humble thanks.
In the 1880 Presbyterian Book of Praise, each hymn had an introductory piece of scripture, which I'll be sharing with you uh, before we sing the hymns. I skipped that on the first one. Of course, the scripture related to holy, holy, holy was Revelation 4, verse 8. And they had each of them six wings about him, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. For our next uh, hymn, and for this one we'll ask you to remain seated, the scripture introduction is John 1, verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Our hymn is just as I am. <laughs> Please join with me in our prayer of confession. You'll see it's a responsive prayer. You respond with the darker parts. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. Two of our hymns today have particular Canadian connections. This is the first one. Though it was written by an American Unitarian minister, what he did so on a boat that was carrying immigrants from Europe to Quebec. And uh, he realized that these were precious jewels that were being gathered from everywhere and finding new life. And uh, so it is in that honor that William Cushing wrote these words. He also had in mind these words of the third chapter of Malachi. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Please rise for our hymn when he cometh. <laughs> Stars 
different now than they were back in 1891. That was a long time ago. Long, long time ago. So, I'm just thinking, Jaden, of some of the things that are different between then and now. And the first one is up on the screen there. You'll see there is a picture of an old pew. And that's actually out when you first come into the church. That's one of the pews that people sat on back in 1891. The ones everyone's sitting on right now, these came in 1945, along with the pulpit and the communion table and uh, much of the stained glass that you see as well. But So what we were sitting on would have been different back then. Now, how we got here, some of us would have got here the same way. Did you folks walk this morning? Did you walk? So a lot of people would have walked, and they would have come on horseback, and they would have come by train. That's probably how the minister would have got here, coming from some of the other towns that he served. And uh, the one thing they wouldn't have had was cars. No one would have been able to come with a car or a truck or anything like that. The way that this room is lit is different. See over there, you can sort of see on the table, there's the two candles and there's a lamp in between. There would have been oil lamps like that, but a, and they probably would have used candles as well. And during the day, they wouldn't have used anything because you wouldn't have to. Um, heating. The one thing we kind of hoped we would find but we couldn't find for today was a pot-bellied stove. <laughs> yeah, one of those old stoves instead of a furnace. So that was a big difference in the way things were here. But there are some things that are the same. And the main thing is that it's great people that get together here to support one another and to hear about the stories of Jesus, and to learn God's guidance for their lives. That's something that's the same now as it was then. And today our hope is that these next 125 years are every bit as much fun as the first 125 years have been. So, glad you could come today, bud. Our next scripture is Luke 12, 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But every, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Please remain seated for our singing of God Sees the Little Sparrow Fall. <laughs> Thank you. 
getting together for a special event like this, you uh, do receive well wishes from uh, various places. And so Sue and I have some messages to share with you. The, worst, the first one is from Lynn Mackey, who is our executive secretary at our conference office. Dear friends in Christ, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Her quote from Psalm 133. It is with joy that I send greetings to all of you at Ralph Connor Memorial Church on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of this historic congregation. I send these greetings on behalf of the 20,000 people in Alberta and Northwest Conference who are part of the United Church in this region, the 200 pastoral charges of the conference and our nine presbyteries. We all celebrate this important moment with you. From your roots in the Presbyterian Church, you have been a stable, faithful, and spirit-filled presence in Canmore and have done much over your long years to sustain the spirit and spirituality of your community as you have sought justice for the marginalized, visited the sick, and offered sustaining leadership in times of trouble. With gratitude, we pray God's blessing on you and on your continuing ministry among us. May God's abundant grace enrich and strengthen you during the next 125 years of your faith journey. Peace and grace to you all. Lynn Mackey. In the announcement loop before the service, <clears throat> you will have seen a few visual greetings. Uh, we heard from the Nanton Parkland uh, Blackie Gladys pastoral charge within our presbytery who extended their best wishes uh, from John and Ann Thorburn and from uh, Rick Anderson and Faye Forbes Anderson who all sent uh, visual greetings at that point. Over the years this congregation has produced uh, a candidate for ministry who uh, uh, then became a United Church minister and that is Lois Burney. Lois sends us her greetings from Southern California. Last Tuesday, Jim and I went to the movie The Revenant. I came away thinking how grateful I am that I live in that beautiful area of the world where parts of the movie were filmed. I was also aware that the theology expressed in the movie is light years away from my own. I am so grateful that I had the wonderful opportunity to struggle with my belief system through the ordination process of the United Church of Canada. I was accepted as a candidate for ministry sponsored by the United Church in Canmore and Foothills Presbytery in 1988 and ordained in 1992. Until I began the long convoluted process leading to ordination, I had no idea that one of the major responsibilities of the pastoral charge was to help inquiring spirits to navigate the system and encourage them in spreading the gospel of Jesus the Christ. It is a big responsibility for the pastoral charge and I felt supported throughout my struggles by the body of the church. And Lois notes, anyone wondering about a call to ministry should check with Greg. <laughs> Age is no barrier. Living in the States as we do for five months each year, I may not always know who I am, but I am much clearer as to who I am not. <laughs> Surrounded by a culture who believes that there should be a gun in every home, in high walls to stop certain people from entering their country, either through legal or illegal means, who lock up more people in jails, who shake their heads at our embrace of Syrian refugees, and many more issues. It's gratifying to have a community of faith in Canmore, where I can fit in most of the time. Getting back to the movie, it grapples with an important question. Who is the real savage? And it expresses the notion that revenge is best left up to God. The movie's God is not the kind of God I have loved and tried to serve with your support in my ministries. And so I thank you, Ralph Connor. And this letter is from Earl and Catherine, and I think all of you remember them fondly, and I had the pleasure of following them. Dear Greg, please extend our hearty congratulations to the good people of Ralph Connor Memorial United Church on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of the congregation. What a marvelous milestone to celebrate. Our pastoral relationship with the congregation extended from 1996 to 2003. 
The congregation at that time was grounded in the history of families who have been part of Canmore's coal mining past, people of humble origin who built a community that was close-knit. There were also many young families drawn by appreciation for the mountain setting and the quality of life in this small but now growing town. Before our arrival, we were given the impression that the musical life of Ralph Connor needed encouragement. We very soon realized that what we really needed to do was get out of the way and let the depth of the musical ability flow freely. Of course, Jan Tessantier has been the instrumental, ha ha, they put in brackets, in developing this aspect of the congregation's life. Flutes and cellos and beautiful voices have risen to God's ear from the sanctuary and become a valued expression of the faith of those who gather. Ralph Connor enjoyed the lively presence of children during our time, young and happy voices filled the backyard during coffee time. Some may recall the Save the Ark campaign, the children's stage, to protect the Noah's Ark, created by Bob Nolden, from destruction when adults thought it was occupying too much room in the hall, an opportunity to learn about speaking up and working together. When we arrived, one of the prominent geological features above the town was known as Chinaman's Peak. Thanks to the dedicated leadership of several members of the congregation and the town, it was renamed Ha Ling Peak in honor of the individual who raced to the top and blessed it with a good story. Others may recall the news, the news coverage the congregation received when the baptismal font went missing following an afternoon wedding. Remarkably, a few months after the story appeared in the local paper, we received a phone call at the church from one of the staff at the hardware store saying they had found it, obviously returned, to the alley behind the store. We were happy to have it back. No further questions asked. In its proper place as a sign of welcome into the faithful community. And Ralph Connor has been adaptable. Realizing that work commitments kept many in town from attending Sunday morning worship and that there was opportunity for other modes of worship to be explored, even song was begun. A gentle midweek gathering time. Little did we know when planning the first even song service that September 12, 2001 would be the day after so many lives were ended with the destruction of the World Trade Centers in New York and that Evensong would open its doors to receive bewildered people shocked by this pivotal world event. The simple interior of the small church speaks of those who built it and provides a graceful and a warm place for those who continue to gather. Its walls have absorbed babies' cries at baptism, children's laughter and excitement. It has held the hopes and joys of weddings celebrated and the tears and grief of families who mourn. It is filled with the stories of people who have gathered in God's spirit to share friendship and faith. May it continue on for years to come. <clears throat> with thanksgiving and warm regards, Catherine McLean and Earl Rayburn. And from Reverend Dr. Bruce McIntyre and June McIntyre, and they reference an event that is uh, shown on screen here uh, on screen here with the platform party for the 100th anniversary service. Dear friends in our Christian family, congratulations on your 125th anniversary. We have wonderful memories of the several years we spent as part of your loving congregation. Your congregation has truly reached a milestone in Christian service in Canmore. It would be a blessing to be able to be with you today to celebrate with you. Our memories of the 100th anniversary are treasures we won't soon forget. One of the highlights being having the moderator, the very Reverend Walter Farquharson, come from Saltcote, Saskatchewan as our guest preacher, along with the late Reverend Helen Stover Scott, who was president of Alberta Northwest Conference, bringing special greetings. We wish you many more years of being a Christian presence in Canmore, and may the 125th anniversary celebrations prove to be as enjoyable as the 100th. As always, in love, Bruce and June. It's wonderful to be here in person to offer my congratulations to you all and to realize that there have been connections over a long period of time. 
since before 1992 when I moved out to Alberta from Toronto. <laughs> Some of you were coming. And um, was ordained in 1992 and met Lois Burney that year. And uh, it was also wonderful to have time uh, because of my sister living here, having opportunities to be here a number of times over the years. And I think back to the celebration of our our father's life here in this congregation too, because he lived the last little while in Canmore and just loved it, loved to look at Cascade Mountain. So lots to, to remember and lots to celebrate. And like Catherine and Earl, it was wonderful to see even song blossom in the, the one year that I was here too. Second Thessalonians 2, verses 16 and 17. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Please rise for the singing of Jesus Loves Me. Many of you will recall in the old 1930 United Church hymnary, there was the metrical psalter that had those little vertical lines showing you just how things were divided up and the first half would be the minister, second half the congregation. That's the way that we will be reading Psalm 121 today. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. My help cometh from the Lord. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Our gospel lesson is from Luke 4 and cha uh, chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him, all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. 
And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. First Corinthians one eighteen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Please rise for the singing of Tell Me the Old Old Story. This is a recollection by Miss Minnie Fulton. One of the treasures uncovered by Mary Smith in her 
church history were the memories of a young church teacher named Minnie Fulton, who arrived in Canmore when this church was brand new. In Miss Fulton's words, here is a description of that congregation and its first minister. No Sunday services have ever been so impressive to me as have been those that I attended in the mountains. In the mornings, the congregations were usually small. I have, on more than one occasion, been the only one of my sex present, and perhaps a dozen men. There were really not very many women in town. But in the evenings, what a change. The church would be packed to the doors, nearly all men, perhaps 15 or 20 women, men of all sorts and conditions, men of all grades of society and of many different countries, and men of all ages. I sat in the choir on the platform, and I often fancied I could read a whole life story on the faces as they listened to Mr. Gordon preaching. To me, the 121st Psalm was written in an unknown tongue until I heard Ralph Connor read it for the first time in that little church in the mountains. The old story of the Gospels lost its remoteness and became a living, genuine fact as the men heard it from his lips. I have seen tears in the eyes and on the cheeks of rough, hardened-looking men as he referred in the most sympathetic, brotherly manner to their temptations and discouragements and to their battles lost and won. I wish you could have heard those men sing some of those old familiar hymns at the Sunday night services. What a friend we have in Jesus, rock of ages, nearer my God to thee, and God love the world of sinners lost. It seemed as though they sang it from their hearts, and I'm sure it helped them through the week to keep a little truer to the better things of life. I know for myself that I felt nearer heaven in some of those services than I have ever felt since or may ever again, till by God's grace, I get there. I just find that so charming. <laughs> Next, we have another hymn that has strong Canadian roots. Uh, this one was written by Joseph Scriven, and uh, he was from Rice Lake, Ontario, near Peterborough. Uh, apparently, Port Hope was his place in Ontario at the point that this hymn was written. But this is the, one of the great hymns of the church and one of the great hymns of Canada. It's founded in John 11, 35 and 36. Jesus wept, then said they, behold how he loved him. Please remain seated for the singing of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. 
over its first 125 years, well over 40 ministers have served this congregation on an ongoing basis. The early days contributed to that number. They were a particular struggle with 17 ministers in the first 25 years. <laughs> Even Charles Gordon slash Ralph Connor was only here two years before heading to his next call. Today, we make special mention of those who have longer terms of service, five years or longer. Some of the far back names are now remembered only by their photos in the vestibule, but I'm certain that other names will evoke fond memories from days gone by. So we remember with thankfulness the ministries of Matthew White, here six years from 1919 to 1925. George Kettles, eight years from 1928 to 1936. Alex Mitchell, five years from 1939 to 1944. Doc McKinnon, the longest serving minister, 11 years from 1944 to 1955. Tom Jones, six years from 1966 to 72. Florence Wilkinson, five years from 1972 to 77, uh, including a period of time where she was the president of Alberta Conference. Bill Thwing, eight years from 77 to 85. Bruce McIntyre, seven years from 85 to 92. Catherine McLean and Earl Rayburn, seven years from 1996 to 2003, and Ron Jeffrey, eight years from 2006 to 2014. We give thanks for all who have taken on the mantle of word, sacrament, and pastoral care in this church over the years in a spirit of humble thanks. We now present our offerings, and be ye warned, these are metal plates, so your change will make a nice sound in them. <laughs> Please be seated. Let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving. Following the prayers of thanksgiving, we will be singing the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, 
by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The scripture is 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. And did all drink of the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Please rise for the singing of Rock of Ages. The Presbyterian congregation at Canmore had been meeting informally for a couple of years by the time Charles Gordon arrived to be their minister. And they started construction on this church building almost immediately. Reverend Gordon recalled these days many years later, as well as some general impressions of what it was like to be the minister here. The congregation consisted of only a very few members and a large number of adherents. However, the whole community turned in and gladly helped, as did the people of Banff. From my personal friends in the East, 
an organ was secured. That organ was a great thing for us. It figured not only in our church services, but in concerts, in literary society events in which miners and railroad boys took part. The church became a center of social life for all classes in the community, and especially became the means of drawing the miners into fellowship. They contributed splendidly to the building and came to the services too. In our fight for a sober and clean town, <laughs> had to do it at least once, we led the forces of railroad men and miners alike. Those were great days, plenty of hard work, long rides, winter and summer, heat and cold and rain and snow, wolves on the trail and the devil all around. <laughs> but good, sound men and loyal-hearted women, in whose hearts God put courage and patience and faith, then as now brought victory to the cause of the kingdom of God. Thank you for those words, Reverend, Con Reverend Gordon. Our closing hymn is introduced with these words from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You have to stand up for this one. <laughs> Please rise for stand up, stand up for Jesus. I do have a few words of thanks before the benediction is pronounced. I appreciate very much the generosity of time and energy by Tanya and the choir in preparing for today, along with the specific assistance of Karen Fraser, who helped us to select hymns that were actually being used here by, let's say, the 1960s, that were also in that book from 1891. We offer our thanks to our friends at Lakeview United Church in Calgary for lending us their choir gowns for use today. <laughs> yeah, it really finished the look, didn't it? We thank Sandy Simanis, our office administrator, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, but has had so much fun embracing the old time aspects of our anniversary and today's service. And she found that special font uh, that looks just like an old typewriter uh, in your, uh, your bulletins today. I thank today's uh, photographer, my son Jordan, for lending his time and expertise to make sure that this event is recorded for posterity. I thank you in advance, uh, Louise Matson, who was baptized here back when it was Canmore Presbyterian Church, 
for cutting the anniversary cake for us after the service. Many thanks to the worship committee and our church council for helping with coffee time and to the members of the High Strung Ukulele Group who will be leading us in a couple of more songs after the service. And I am so pleased with the number of you that came in period dress and have really embraced the day. Uh, that has enhanced our experience of this. And I thank all of you for joining in this service of celebration, commemoration, and praise. And most of all, for making this congregation such a special place as we enter our next 125 years. Please rise then as we receive the benediction from the sixth chapter of Numbers. Now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee 